You're going to build a 4-agent coder reviewer agent system, 4-agent code structure reviewer coder agent system, and n-mini agents entity extraction agent system. First system takes in the user input for the task, then generates an initial code. Then three different reviewer agents will review this code and create a combined review. We save that to file. And for as many times we have specified, this review gets back to the first agent, coder agent, and we generate code and repeat the process. And we save each one of the code files to file. In the second system, we can initialize as many agents as we like. Then we take in user input and we create an abstract code structure using each one of the agents in parallel. And then we get that code structures review again with different agents in parallel. And then we get a final code based on the reviewed code structure and save it to file. In the entity extraction system, we take in some text and split it into chunks of specified word numbers. Then we take each one of those chunks and initialize three different agents with different JSON system messages to extract different types of entities. And we run them all in parallel. And then we write each one of the ent extracted entities to a JSON file. And then we combine it. You can see the extracted entities for each chunk is presented and different agents extract different types of information. With the code structure agents, we generate code structures, improve upon it, and then generate final code from them. With a coder agent, we start from initial code, then improve upon it iteratively based on the combined review of three agents. Let's run them all at the same time and watch them output their files into these three folders up here. As we can see, the entity extraction and the code structure agents are done and our iterative sequential agent is still working. We'll stop it right here. Let's start by building the code structure agent system. All of these agents are built by using my OpenAI Unified Framework that I built. For more information on this, please watch my original OpenAI Unified API video. But it is just a class to get responses from different API endpoints from OpenAI, including regular GPT-4, GPT Vision, DALI to generate images, embeddings endpoint to get embeddings, and similarity search to perform similarity search. I also have included both the regular versions and the async versions of these methods so that we can build parallelized systems, as we've seen. All the code files for this project is available at my Patreon, along with 200 plus other project files. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it very much. I also have exclusive coding walkthrough videos. Link will be in the description. Let's start by importing our libraries. Then we define an initial code structure agent, which uses the add message async method of the OpenAI class, which simply deals with the message history, appending the roles and the contents for the API call. This agent will return a JSON format with all necessary components, which is a list, a plan, and a code structure. Then we add another message. This time the role is user. This is going to be the task. Then we get a response with the get response async. Get response methods takes in a color so that we can do a colorful printing to the terminal with the streaming one. Then we return the response, but we do have some error catching. And finally, for the API call. Next up is the agent for reviewing the code structure. This agent is tasked to return a JSON format with a critical thorough review of the code format, return all necessary components, suggest improvements, and revise code structure. Again, we are using the add message async method. Then we add the code structure as a system message. Then we await after we put a user message is thoroughly and critically review the code, user message here will be the original user message. So we keep track of that. Then we get a response and return the response as we've done with some except error catching. Next up is our generate final code agent, which will, which will take in the revised code structure. And for finally, create a running and fully working code. It'll create a plan and return the final code. We again put the review structure as a system message and a user message for it to create a fully functioning code. And we again give the user message as a reminder. And then we return the response. Next up is our main loop. We initialize our agents using the GPT calls class with JSON mod true, use async true, and mix word per message is a soft instruction to GPT rather than mixed tokens parameter. It is better suited to instruct GPT to return a certain length of responses rather than being uh, your responses being cut off with the mixed tokens parameter. Then we create a tasks list. For async uh, functioning, we're going to use async IO. So we initialize as many of the fetch code structure functions as there are initial code GPTs we have initialized. And this await async IO gather will run all these tasks concurrently in parallel simultaneously. And then we are going to save them into code structure files enumerated. Next, we start our review instances again using GPT calls for as many as we, we would like. Then we create review tasks using the review code structure function. And then we await that with async IO. And then we loop over the review structures and save them to file. Next up, we initialize our final code instances of our agents. Then we can create final code tasks list using the generate final code function. And then we await it with async IO.gather so we can run it concurrently in parallel. And then we save them to file. And then for cleanup purposes, we loop over all our instantiated 
classes and we delete them. This all comes together in our main loop where we define the number of agents we want to use. Makes work per message here is for debugging purposes. If it's set to none, then there is no limitations. But if you want to run quick tests, maybe you can set this to something small like 10. Then we have a color list defined. We make sure we create a code structure agents for a folder. If it doesn't exist, then we input the user message. This time, in this case, writing a tower defense game, and then we run it with async IO. If you're enjoying my projects, you can easily browse and search for them at my website, echolive.live. And while you're there, make sure to visit AutoStreamer, which allows you to create content automatically, create live streams, record them, or build course websites. I have a live stream demonstrating its capabilities, but you can also view a website that it has built, which teaches Python. I also built a web app called codehive.app, where you can find over 900 GPT-powered Python chat applications. You can get ideas here, or just practice if you like the Code files, you can download all of them at my Patreon, currently for $100. When we run this, we see our classes being agents being instantiated, and then they go to work, and their responses are printed here in parallel and using different colors, so we can see all of them working. Our code structure agents folder has been created, and their outputs will be written here as they come in. Now let's build the n-many agents and city extraction agent system. For this, I have a sample article from Wikipedia on exercise. Let's begin by importing our libraries. And then we define the system message for the first agent. It is to extract information, and the information it's going to extract is the exercise and a list of their benefits. The second agent is tasked with extracting if any diseases are mentioned in the article and the exercises which might help alleviate against, protect against that disease. Our third agent is going to be tasked with just extracting a list of essential information and a few sentence summary of the chunk that is given to it. We begin by initializing our agents, depending on how many agents we have defined. We again use the GPT calls class, which is almost set to true, use async true, and we initialize an agents list for as many agents as we have defined and return it. Next is a return split document function, which opens a document path, splits it into how many word chunks you have defined, and then returns those chunks. Then we are defining an asynchronous function to process a chunk with an agent. We get the system message by the agent ID, which we will be passing to it. If you remember, these system, system messages are numbered. Then for each agent, we're going to use the add message function to add that message, system message to that agent. Add message is a method which just add messages to the list of the history where they're uh, given a role and content. And then we add a user message asking, please extract the relevant information from the chunk. Then we await the agents get response async method. And then we write these to files using json.dump and then return the file name. And at the end, we're going to have a combined JSON files, which is going to loop over all the files that we have and combine all the keywords and bring together all the extracted entities from each chunk so that we'll have all the entity extraction done for the whole document. And then we are going to save it to combine results. And now we're defining our main loop. We're going to take in a document path, define a chunk word size, how many agents here, in this case, three. This uh, max words per message is for debugging. But you can also set a lower number here. If you were to use mixed tokens in this scenario, then your JSON objects may get cut and you may run into JSON load errors and coding errors. However, if you use this mixed word per message parameter, even if you were to set only a keywords as your limit, then JSON objects will be properly produced because this is a soft instruction. Then we call the chunks. We get the chunks by calling return split document function. Then we initialize our agents. We create an empty tasks list for async IO. Then we loop over all the chunks, and then we loop over all of our agents, and we create a task list, which is going to call the process chunks with agent, and we append those tasks. Then we simply await async IO.gather. Then we run the combined JSON files function on them, and we just simply run it. And if we were to run it right now, we will see all of our agents being initialized, and they will work in tandem to create and extract entities a JSON file. I have also added a check that will create the dictionary if it doesn't exist. Let's run it again. And now our entity agents folder has been created. The first chunks are in. The agent two is done with chunk one, chunk, chunk two, and chunk three. We can see them arriving as they're done. And now they're all done, and we have a combined results of JSON, which has a lot of important information, which three agents in parallel were able to extract chunk by chunk. And at the end, we have the summaries as well. Now let's build our four agent code reviewer system. Let's begin by importing our libraries, and then we define a function to write to file with some text and file name. Then we define our mix word per message, initialize our coder GPT, JSON mode true, and then we initialize our first reviewer GPT. As you can see, these don't have the JSON mode, so they set to false, but they are async set to true. And the second one is initialized just the same, and the third one. 
Next up is to add in message for our original Codush GPT, your coding assistant GPT. And this is just some uh, instructions and uh, instructions for it to return as a JSON with a plan and code keys. Then we take in user input and we get initial code by using the ask question method. OpenAI Unified is an ask question method which handles the adding of the messages and getting responses. Since we will be receiving a JSON file, we only want uh, values in its code key. Then we write out the file. Then we define a perform review function, and then we have a review message. Then by using asyncoyo.gather, we use the ask question async to send the review message and print it in different colors. And then we return the reviews. As you can see, this was only the function, and now we have to call it, and so we will call this function within an event loop. So we instance we start a loop with asyncio.get event loop and define how many iterations we would like these reviewers and the coder to go at it we define a loop and we run the perform review using loop.run until complete and then we clear the histories of the reviewer gpts this is a method that exists in the gpt call class then we combine all the reviews we write them to file then we add that to the message of coder gpt using add message method then we add another message saying take this feedback into account and make the necessary changes to code and then we call the coder gpt again and get its code and write that to file so this is it i hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you in the next video